all sort of seems to work. Tell me about writing mm. your material. Do you are you a sit down with a notepad sort of person? What how do you write? For writing journalism, then you sort of ultimately have to sit down and write it. But for writing stand up comedy, I can't. I've not got the discipline. What I do is something will happen. I think is funny. Then I'll notice myself tell a friend that thing, and I think, oh, that was funny. Then I'll tell an audience it. All of my shows have been written from doing it on stage in front of people. That's how I'm much more comfortable writing. Even at the moment when I'm doing shows in, front, in larger venues, um, the first sort of hour is improvised and I find that oh, certain things start being repeated and eventually they become material and sort of accumulate stuff and things are attracted to them. I've never been someone to sort of go, oh, I'll try it, because it just feels dry. I like, cause it, because ultimately its aim is sort of, is that kind of, is, is in relationship with an audience. I think that the, for me personally, the best way is to write it from that, if its genesis is with an audience, then when it's realized, it sort of, it makes it magnificent because it's always been in relationship with an audience. There's never been a bit where I'm just, I'm not funny when I'm on my own. I'm just a murmuring, muttering, in cat loving imbecile, you know, so I'm funny when I've got to be. Yeah, do, do, how do you remember it? Because it, like, well, it, uh, mostly it's recorded, so I can check it back if I need to, but it sort of it leaves a footprint, I think, when stuff's dead funny. It's sort of, you sort of think, oh yeah, remember that bit. Sometimes someone will go, oh, you never did that bit again, that bit was really good. And I think, oh yeah, yeah, and put it back in. But mostly I remember it because of the thrill of like it getting a laugh and the thrill of realization. Tell me this, is it a proper job? Yeah, when you do it well, it's a proper job, isn't it? You have to, like, that's where you, sort of, when you're doing a tour, when it's, like, night after night, you sort of think, well, this is now work, because right? you might not feel like it, but, like, you know, the, every night they have the same, ob you know, you have the same obligation to your audience, that so you can't go, oh, I feel good today, so I'll come right from my core, and then, I, you know, you've a, people, you have a duty to entertain people. But, you know, it is work, it is to do it properly, it is an endeavour. Do you ever feel fraudulent, then? No, because I sort of, it took me ages, Dawn. It took me ages and, like, it nearly killed me. You know, so, like, uh, no, I don't, because, like, I just, like, did Bugsy Malone when I was 15, and from the first second, uh, the, from the time I'd uttered the first line, it's okay, if, it's okay, everybody, it's okay. From that moment that I said that as a 15 year old, I thought, oh, I'm doing this forever. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God there's something else. Thank God. And it took me enough of my life again to get any money out of it. You know, to get anyone, so I think I've earned it. Do you think it's a calling for you, Russell? Yeah, I think it's a vocation. I think it's, it's all there is, you know. It, I couldn't do anything else. I wouldn't do anything else. And if it got took away from me, I'd go, fine, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you know, but I couldn't carry on without it. Are you, are you jealous of other good performers? Well, yes. Yes, I am. But, like, but not since I've got better. You know, sort of, when I was learning, and of course you always are, but when I felt less confident in what I was doing, I was, I was like, ah! And when people were successful, I always felt like that success was a finite thing, and if everyone else was eating up all of the success... There wouldn't I would, be any left for you. I ain't got none now! I'm still no poor. No pie left! Yeah. But now, I mean, I still, yeah, I get a sort of a twinge of, ah, that was good. Like, but, uh... Not very often, because I don't like schadenfreude as a, just as a thing. That's one of my best characteristics, is if someone, if I'm walking along with someone, they trip or bang their head, my instinct is, oh, you're right. But I don't laugh. I mean, that's one of the best things about me. Do other young comedians ask your advice about how to get into the business or anything? Yeah. Well, and do you help? Say, fuck off. <laughs> Find out the old you way. baby comedian. <laughs> go on, go and destroy <laughs> yourself for a decade with smack, then come back to me. <laughs> Um, yeah, I do. I go just, I go, uh, like, uh, Eddie Izzard to give me advice, like, early on. He go, uh, like he said, uh, he goes, keep doing stand-up comedy because they have no, they don't give a fuck about television presenting in America, so you need to keep doing it. And, uh, don't judge yourself till you've done a hundred gigs. So I pass on those things, and I say, and my thing is, like, uh, be truthful, and try, and don't imitate... Like what, like, you know, sort of like, you know, isn't it annoying when you watch it on telly? It was more, this is more with television presenters than with, um, like with comedians, but it happens as well with comedians, that they adopt a stance of talking and manner and grammar that is the way that people talk on television. Like, you sort of think that's not real. So, like, it just becomes white noise. You don't listen to it. So if you make sure that the stuff you're saying is authentic, then it's better. 
you know, like, otherwise you tune out. We're all so familiar with media now and watching, you know, so, so if I, like, I think, if I sort of, I know that already, I've seen that, that's not taking me anywhere, that's not surprising me. And the only way, ultimately, that you can do that is by being truthful. Because I think that what all of us, the mistake that, oh, that I made, and I think that this is probably quite typical, is that you sort of think, oh my God, I love Morrissey, Morrissey is amazing, I love Peter Cook, I love Richard Pryor, I want to be like Richard Pryor, Morrissey, Peter Cook. But then you realise well, what those people are is they are themselves perfectly and beautifully in tune with what they are. And so if you get in tune with what you are, then you, you'll have it. You're, you're, in, you're in line with the universe. Yeah. You'll be supported by the energy around you. But if you're constantly trying to be Peter Cook or Richard Pryor or Morrissey, then you'll just be shit. It's the, the an elementary mistake, though, isn't elementary it? Elementary mistake. You kind of just... You do copy what you love. Yes, I think you do, and I think that I don't think there's anything. I think that you can learn yeah. from it. You know, I can yeah. like you know. I know that I have done that, but you, I don't think you can be great until you've stopped doing that. Who's your sternest critic? Uh, I would like to say myself, Dawn, but there's some vicious bastards out there <laughs> rising in English national newspapers. Um. God, like, sort of, like, um, I thought I would have much more yes men when I got to the point where I earned a lot of money, but I ain't got no yes men. They haven't got no men and fuck off men. So I've got. Be grateful for that. My mum thinks everything I do is brilliant. She thinks I'm a good swimmer because I've not drowned. My mum thinks that everything I do is fantastic. But, uh, like, you know, but, like, sort of, the people I work with, the people I write with, like, sort of, they're all pretty harsh. I've not got anyone who's gushing. Most of the people I work with think I'm a right dickhead. <laughs> Are you a guy who knows himself? Well, yeah, because I'm well self-obsessed, Dawn, and I've, like, spent ages on me now, like, you know, sort of, like, f different treatment centres, navel-gazing, endless psychology and therapy and stuff. So, yeah, I do have a quite profound self-knowledge now. And is your comedy an interest in yourself, or is it an escape from that? Well, no, because what I think, right, is whilst we are hu human beings are diverse and different, ultimately, we, like, everyone knows what it is to be in love, everyone knows what it is to find something funny, everyone knows what it is to hate or to be jealous or feel insecure. We're made from the same basic stuff, isn't it? That we're like, is it that we're 30% of the DNA the same as, the ban as bananas and 60% the same as worms and 98% the same as chimpanzees? So we can't be that different from each other. And so, and so I think, in a way, like, as luck would have it, my uh, self-obsession and self-indulgence has meant that I've got a, a good... Uh, understanding of other people it's made me very empathetic because I sort of think oh yeah I would feel like that if you know in fact sometimes if I'm bored in a conversation I'll say just pretend that person's you talking to you and perhaps that will spark things up a bit and, oh I'm a woman now w intriguing would you go to watch you then if you weren't you yeah I think so yeah I would because when I watch like videos back or something I think oh, that was funny so yeah I think I would definitely <laughs> And whose approval do you seek, Russell? I think everyone's really, like, you know, sort of everyone's like, you know, I mean, a lot of it encoded in me, I suppose, is like one in my father's approval, the approval of the kind of men that I grew up looking at, sort of big, white, Essex men. I want them to like me. And I sort of, you know, sort of, so that, you know, I want that. I suppose men, I kind of, but then women, everyone, everybody. Ah, comedy. Come di orchestra in Lusanapo.